All right, so what I need to do now is um, I, I have my chemicals on order for the, uh, the bluing system here. And uh, in the meantime, what I need to do is kind of just do some work as far as um, getting all of the, sort of the little bells and whistles done. Um, one thing I got to do is one of these tanks have to be a, a top flow, um, continuous flow system where um, I'm going to have to put a garden hose in the bottom and have it flow out of the top so we can irrigate it constantly um, with a continuous flow. And another thing I need to do is because I'm in such a tiny shop here, um, I can't run this bluing system and just let it run in here because my air handler won't suck out enough of the the steam um, the, that is going to be put out by the salt. So because it's salts and water. Um, so what I need to do is I need to make an exhaust hood for my bluing tank. And um, what I'm going to do is use this um, hang wire. Uh, I just got a bunch of this angle iron. And I'm going to make the frame out of this. And uh, use the rest of the um, black iron sheet that I have. And uh, basically, it's not going to be a system that's going to suck the air out, so it's not going to go through my squirrel cage fan. Show you my fan while I'm at it. Squirrel cage fan, um, high volume fan. This is going to go at the one end, and it's going to blow through. I'm going to make uh, louvers, so the air will be sucked in at like a venturi effect. Um, but the, the fumes will never actually interact with the fan itself. Um, so basically that's where I'm at, that's where I'm at, and uh, I'm gonna just start making the, uh, the frame. And uh, when I get a couple pieces cut up and ready to go, I'll turn the camera on. Okay, so the way this design is gonna work is that the exhaust, this is the tank that the blue's gonna be in, the, the uh, Oxinate 8, or Oxinate 7, excuse me. And I want to leave this tank so um, I want to be able to take the exhaust hood off of it and the tank can just remain. That way in case if I ever had to move the tank around um, it's, and there were, if there were ever chemicals in there or anything that I needed to do, um, it wouldn't be this giant thing. So it's going to be modular. So what I need to do is um, the frame I'm going to make out of this small angle iron like I said and I'm going to have it go around the edge of the, uh, the bluing tank here and um, basically I just need to cut these to length. Okay, so I just want to illustrate my point. We have the two uh, edge pieces on here and we have the end piece that we have to weld up. But you can see the angle iron overlaps here. So what we need to do is we need to measure our angle iron. Just a quick little tip for you guys. Um, when you want to find the depth of your angle iron, just take your square and just run your square into your angle iron. And that's going to give you your depth. Now you can take that and you can see I already scored a line here. But you just take that, like that, and you can just score a line. And that's how you know how how deep to take your to receive the next piece of angle iron. Just a little tip. Also, you guys have these squares at home. This right here on the bottom of these squares is a little scribe. You can scribe metal with it. Just so you know, like that. Okay. See the best way to show you guys this. Something like that. And you're just going to take your punch and right to the corner. That's our half inch mark. We're going to do that again. So, see if you can appreciate that. You can see the, the point that we made there. The and that's where we're going to see our mark here. Our punch mark. Now we need to transfer that mark to the top of the leg here. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to take our Take our square, okay, 
and we're just going to scribe that line. Okay. And then once it's up to the top of that leg, we'll be able to see it. You can see the line scribed. We'll do it again on this side. Again, make sure you mark the same leg. No big deal. And we're just going to scribe the line. Okay, so when we make this cut, we're only going to cut through the one leg that's sticking up. We're not going to cut through the one leg that's laying down. So we're going to stop it short. Okay, again, we're going to start the saw off of the work. So we have our first cut here, okay? Now what we need to do is just make this cut along this axis. So, I just let this, this leg lie on the flat of the blade. And that gives you a pretty square cut every time. So I'll go ahead and do that four more times and then we'll go over and assemble. All right guys, so now that we have all our cuts made, we're gonna go ahead and tack things together. Tack that. All right, now that it's tacked welded, we can go ahead and weld it. 